Hi everyone, welcome to GVAS Fall Summit 2020, The Countdown. And we are literally in the countdown. We have had the opportunity to meet many of our amazing faculty members and get sneak peeks into who they are and what they're gonna share at the conference. And for those of you who haven't tuned into any of the videos, my name is Alicia Merlo, and I have the pleasure of being the host to this amazing faculty. And today we have a guest that is going to bring something really fresh and innovative to the discussion at GVAS and what we're going to talk about today. Her name is Alita, also known in the industry as Shelly Olison, and she is the amazing um, owner and creator of a business called Art Lita. And I'm not going to give away too much right up front, but I'm going to allow Alita to share with us a little bit more about her background because she has a long history in aesthetics. She's an OG like me and more about how she has been able to blend healthcare and what she has been in a, the professional space for many, many years with a passion of hers, which is art. So Alita, thank you so much for being with us today. Of course, Alicia, thank you so much for the opportunity and um, for all of the support that you're providing to myself and the other faculty members. I know we all really appreciate this opportunity, particularly in light of COVID and, and just how distance everybody's feeling. It's nice to connect in this way. Well, I agree with you. It's been a blast for sure. So let's get a little bit into who you are and tell us a little bit of more about yourself and your, your history and your, your time in the industry and what you're doing now. Sure. sure, yeah, absolutely. I've had such a great career in the aesthetic space and you know, I just feel so blessed. There are certain things that you kind of stumble into in life and this was one of them. Um, I've been in the space for 23 years and thank goodness for aesthetics because hopefully I don't look like I've been in the space that long. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, I started in this space when I moved to San Diego to go to UCSD in 1995. Um, my uncle at the time was a practicing uh, cosmetic plastic surgeon who had uh, the leading practice here in La Jolla. And interestingly, all these years later, um, my aunt and uncle uh, still own the practice. They're still the number one practice in San Diego. And so they've just been an inspiration to me my whole life. Um, so I worked for them for about eight years in their software and consulting company. People who have been around in aesthetics for a long time would have heard of it. Um, the software was called Inform and Enhance, and it was the first CRM tool, um, and really still, I have to say, the best CRM tool that's ever come out for uh, cosmetic practices to date. And so in my last three years there, I would travel all around the U.S. I would consult with plastic surgeons and train their staff on optimizing phone calls and you know, how to present a quote in a way that would really resonate with patients and, and help to increase conversion rates. Um, and then they started going through a bit of a transition. My uncle was getting ready to retire. And so the practice was in a little bit of a tenuous position. And so they asked me to actually join the practice. And I did that for a couple of years. I led a patient care coordinator team and I represented two cosmetic plastic surgeons and two cosmetic dermatologists. Um, those in dermatology will probably recognize the name Richard Fitzpatrick um, and Billy Groff. And so they're both just incredible. Of course, we all miss Fitz. Um, and he, he really um, has just been such an inspiration to me. And I learned so much from him in the two years that I worked for him. Um, and then after that, you know, I kind of decided I didn't like to be tucked into a practice. I felt a little bit confined. I wanted to spread my wings again. So I started working for Patient Now first as an account rep, and then I got promoted to VP of sales in the three years I was there, and then ultimately was recruited to modernizing medicine, um, where I was the first salesperson ever to sell Emma, um, which was just the most amazing ride. I was there for almost eight years and ended up leading the dermatology team and, and winning the business of about 60% of dermatology. So in, in that amount of time, I mean, I just spent countless weeks and days on the road, visiting practices. I think I, I counted and I was on the road on a weekly or monthly basis for 16 years all over the US. So I've really seen hundreds and hundreds of practices in every corner of the country and also middle America. So I feel like I have such a unique perspective on, um, you know, what the different practice feels are, right? Whether it's warm and inviting, whether it's, you know, kind of cold and, and that goes through both the decor and also the staff. 
And so, you know, it's just very interesting for me to, to have all that experience and then go back as a phase two, having done that for so long and, and hired um, an executive coach who put me through a barrage of tests. And when she told me that I had the most in common with artists and artistic people, I was absolutely shocked. It was, you know, it like rocked my world. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> Technology and art seem like they're almost opposing, right? Because of that absolutely. in certain ways. And you've spent a lot of time in healthcare technology. So I could see how that might've been surprising. To you. Yeah, it really was. It was kind of a shock. And then it opened my mind because I realized that, you know, in all those times that I'd be going through practices or waiting in reception areas, the one thing I'd be doing was checking out their art and their decor. <laughs> I wasn't really necessarily thinking about the software that I was supposed to sell. I was just kind of, you know, observing and taking in. So I, um, the second group that I had most in common with was CEOs and entrepreneurs, which I had never really thought to start my own thing. And so, you know, I really wanted a passion project, something that I could be really excited about for the next 23 years of my career. And that's where Art Lita was born. Um, so I'm now representing 23 artists, um, a combination of uh, fine art photographers and um, artists themselves, painters. Um, and it's growing. We actually have a backlog of artists to join our community, which is really exciting. Um, everybody I represent is from Southern and Baja, California. And I'm just enjoying it so much. And I really feel like I have a lot to bring to both um, the clientele that I could potentially serve and just healthcare and really opening minds to look at things in a different way. And also to the artists and just helping their careers take off. So I'm finding it really rewarding. And that's really a unique consideration, I think, for our space. And such a refreshing talk that you'll be speaking on at GVAS because we talk about the patient experience all the time, right? You know this because you were in software and Inform and Enhance was all about kind of how you can um, kind of guide the patient journey, right? As well as patient now and modernizing medicine, mm -hmm. right? It was kind of a front end, back end mm -hmm. um, patient flow or patient experience. And then what you talked about before from working in practice, right? Not noting the things that really kind of have impressions, which is how they engage with the team that works there and the doctors right. and what's that first phone call, the follow-up look like. But I just really was just so impressed by that there is some kind of science behind the environment that we're in, depending on the room, whether you're in the reception room. I hate the name waiting room. <laughs> People don't like to wait, but we love to be right. received, right? There, there's my practice consulting kind of, you know, exactly blood showing. And also then we go from that reception room into a treatment room and there is a mind shift, right? There's a change in our kind of probably of our mood and our emotions, right? Because we're, we're going from experiencing one thing into something else. And I am just really thrilled to learn more from you about what you're going to be talking about at GVAS um, and yeah. how what we place around those environments can really make a difference for our patients. So without giving away the, the whole talk, but because it's so new and creative and, and something that I think that the audience at GVAS is going to really appreciate looking at within their own practices, maybe share with us what is your talk titled and sure. what they're gonna learn, why it's important, and maybe some key takeaways um, that they can um, walk away from and apply to their practice. Sure, great. Yeah, and again, thank you for the opportunity. I'm, I'm thrilled to share this, and, and um, I do think it's going to make a difference in people's practices, so I can't wait to see how it all unfolds. Um, so the, the presentation is titled, Art's Impact on Patient Experiences and Outcomes. And uh, I came to that title because as I was researching my business, you know, it was such a big shift to go from healthcare, and specifically technology for healthcare, to art, um, that I have been doing so much research and learning over the last um, almost two years since I decided to make this decision. And so um, in all of the reading and educating that I've been doing for myself, I was delighted to find that there are numerous studies, and I found a number of them in the U.S. National Library of Medicine. Um, and these have been done in the U.S., they've been done in Denmark, uh, which happens to be the happiest country in the world, despite their dreary wi winters. <laughs> and so it's all been hospital-based, though. And so these hospitals have done numerous studies where 
They'll have patients in rooms with no art, and then they'll have patients in rooms with the proper art. And they have demonstrated that they have um, helped their vital signs. They've actually reduced the number of days in recovery. They've had a much better patient experience. They've been happier. And so there are really tangible scientific studies that have been done that have proven that this makes a really big impact. And so when you think about the aesthetic space and just why patients are coming, right? These patients are conscious of their own personal aesthetics. They want to make an improvement in how they personally are perceived. And they are going into a practice um, on one hand, just full of anxiety and hating this thing about themselves. I've, I've been on the patient end of the consult enough that, you know, when I open and reveal my greatest insecurity, it's a horrible feeling. And, you know, I would just blush head to toe and start sweating, I remember. And so if you can have art that's specifically calming and reassuring, and so subconsciously they feel not only that they're safe because of the artwork, but also that the doctor that they're meeting with has an aesthetic eye because the artwork in the exam room is very aesthetically pleasing, it can subconsciously make them more open um, to moving forward and feeling really positive about the experience because it is that sense of connecting with a doctor and feeling like they understand you and your goals and they have the talent and the acumen needed to accomplish them that actually gets patients to schedule surgery. And then of course, hopefully come back for more and refer other patients for surgery as well. Well, that's really exciting. I love that there is science behind it, right? It's not just anecdotal, but there is research that supports what you're saying. And I can see that because I have, you know, read and in my time in the industry and just in my time in understanding just people and you know that's kind of my passion and noting that you know yes your blood pressure can go down when you're in certain environments whether you're, you're hearing sounds smelling smells or you know visually visually being you know kind of soothed or calm right. or even stimulated so I think it is very interesting how this can be a strategy for a practice that is not just based on things looking pretty on your wall, mm -hmm. but really based on how it's going to make a difference for that patient when they come to see you and the impression that they have about that experience. That's really just cool stuff that you have there, Alita, that you're going to be bringing. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I, I think it's really fascinating. And, you know, having been, worked as a consultant before and having worked in software companies where you want to make sure that people implement the software so that they can get all of the advantages. There's a lot of work that people from the outside ask practices to do. And until I actually went and did the job within a practice, I did not appreciate how much effort it is to do all the things that people ask you to do. So if you can kind of have this as, you know, like your secret ally, in the practice that doesn't take human intervention. It's just something that I feel is such a win-win. And then not to mention, it doesn't just help the patients, it can actually help doctors. And so many doctors are dealing with burnout, even in the aesthetic space. Um, and so, you know, I do have to say, I felt a little guilty when I found out that burnout was so much caused by EHR, since that was my background for so long. So now I feel like this is kind of like me giving back and fixing some of that a little bit. <laughs> oh, that's great. So for those who are going to attend your session, maybe there's a couple key points that they're going to walk away with, right? Because I went to your point, you said a word that is just a big kind of buzzword for me, which is implementation, right? Mm. You know, I, would, my, I have a saying that, you know, the best laid plans die on the sword of execution. Right. Um, and so I love that this really doesn't require what you're going to be talking about, a whole lot of, you know, implementation and execution as it would to exactly. bring over to a new software, bringing in a new technology. But really, can you share with us a little bit of like, all right, when I'm going to listen to you talk at mm. GVAS, what are, my, what are some of the actionable things that I'm going to be able to walk away with? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I appreciate that. So I'm going to cover uh, several different topics, but, you know, just breaking it down, the importance of art in healthcare. We're going to talk a lot about color psychology um, because that is going to help you to look at the art in your office in such a different way. Colors are so key to accomplishing this. And you may have gorgeous pieces, but they might just be accomplishing the wrong things based on the color and the goals that you're trying to accomplish. 
We're also gonna talk about um, interior design trends for 2021. So I recently joined um, the American Society of Interior Designers as an industry partner, and I got the scoop on all the newest colors and trends for decor. And so we'll include some of that in case people are looking to maybe do a little bit of updating um, to their decor in general, maybe changing wall colors or things like that. Um, we'll talk about evidence-based design. And so that is where a lot of the scientific studies have come in um, to help people to understand what should be in the art that can help in, in, in conjunction with color psychology to really accomplish your goals um, and really how to tweak it, thinking about what's in the patient coordinator's room versus what's in the exam rooms, et cetera. Um, we'll talk for just a couple minutes about art as an investment. Um, because you can actually do very, very well with this as an alternative investment. So that's just a little, a little thing to touch on. But in terms of actionable, you should be able to walk away from this and evaluate the art in your practice and decide what needs to be moved, what needs to be replaced, what's amazing, and then you know, be able to kind of have an action plan for replacing it. Um, I also offer free art advisory, so if somebody wants my help, I'm happy to do that, um, and it would be fun for me to do that. Well, that is a lot to offer everybody, and I just love, and I know you're speaking the language because you've lived in this environment that you're talking about, evidence-based art. I mean, those are two things that people have never heard or probably consider putting together. You know, I know we have a lot of innovators and a lot of forward-thinking people that attend GVAS or that are on faculty, but to put it all together in this presentation to be able to understand how it applies to their practices and how they can make a difference. It's going to be really exciting. I'm definitely tuning into your session for sure. Even though I don't own a practice, it will allow me to learn about something that I really don't have a lot of experience with so that I can be better for those that I'm speaking with. So you talked about having a sneak peek into 2021 with your membership. That's so cool. Um, you know, the color of the, don't tell us what the Pantone color of the year is going to be. <laughs> exactly. But, you know, is there any other things looking forward, you know, if you have in your crystal ball for the areas that you're working in that, that you also see coming down the road? Well, one thing that uh, I wanted to put in the presentation, but I just didn't have enough time to squeeze it all in, is the fact that I am really interested in doing a clinical study. And actually, Alicia, I have to thank you because the brainstorming session I had with you and Marie Olison um, is where we came up with the idea. So um, we're looking to formulate a formal clinical study in partnership with Visium 360, um, which is uh, the creator of Real Patient Ratings that happens to be owned by my aunt, who's been my mentor my whole life. And uh, so we would like to do a study in conjunction where we look at patient satisfaction in the two months prior. Then I come in, I replace key artworks and do it on loan for a two month period Remeasure patient satisfaction during that time without the practice changing anything else other than the art. And I am just so curious to see what we're going to find because, you know, speaking of evidence, we would like some evidence in the aesthetic space to confirm that what's working for hospitals also works here. So we're excited about that. I think that is very clever. And I am happy to be part of that think tank with you and Marie to be able to bring this to light because. As you spoke about evidence-based and most of the research is hospitals, um, where we can make this, you know, there's, there's definitely transferable experiences there, but I think it will be so meaningful. And I hope that this comes out to be something that you'll publish, uh, maybe yes. in one of our amazing aesthetic journals and be able to really share this and your findings with the community that we have, that we have loved for so long. So if people want to get in touch with you prior to GVAC, how can they find you? How can they learn more about you? <laughs> well, you can always go to my website. It's A-R-T-L-I-T-A dot com. And that's a play on my name, Alita. Um, and for those who are, are laughing about, you know, the fact that you've known me as Shelly for all my life, um, my name is Alita Rochelle. And because I uh, happened to fall into my career through my aunt and uncle, they still called me by my childhood nickname of Shelly. And so I decided... Now that I'm starting my own business, I'm gonna go with the name I was given that I really love. So hopefully that won't be too strange for everybody. But you can find me at that website, artlita.com. And then you can also call me at 
888-789-9443. And you're on Instagram too, right? Absolutely. Yeah, you can find me at artlita.art.gallery. We also have a great YouTube channel, lots of different videos on the website. We have a ton of different blog posts. Um, you can try art on your walls virtually on my website. I mean, there's so much that we've done to really enable uh, us to work with clients all over the country in a virtual fashion. And this was all planned pre-COVID. So it just kind of worked out perfectly um, that we have all these tools available to us now. Well, everybody, I hope you're going to check out Alita and Art Lita prior to GVAS. And I know if you attend this session, which you must be there because I'm going to be there, <laughs> um, you'll learn so much and want to know more because um, this is a very, like I said, fresh, innovative, never been talked from the podium or from the virtual podium before. And nobody better than you who knows this industry so well because of your years of working on both sides in practice and in industry. And again, it is a blessing to be able to marry your passion with your profession. So kudos to you on that. And I really thank you for spending some time with us today. So if we learn a little bit more about what you're up to today and what you're going to bring to us at GVAS. Well, thank you again, Alicia. This has been my pleasure. And I do have the last session on Sunday. So make sure that you guys pace yourselves. I look forward to seeing you there. I have some great handouts for you so that you'll know how to put things into action at the end of it. Awesome. That sounds great. All right, everybody. We will see you at GVAS. All right. Bye -bye. See you there. Bye-bye.